Seiko's Trinity is back with icy cool textured dials, the 65, the 68, and the 70. And of course, they're limited edition. No, it's not limited. What? A non-limited Seiko. I think I remember these non-limited Seiko. It's special edition. They're extremely rare. So in a way, it's kind of limited. So let's check out this non-limited limited edition. Oh, what, 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 what. Introducing the all new Seiko Save the Ocean 63 MAS, the SPB 297, and it's a special edition. Some of the proceeds are going to Paddy Aware, the National Institution of Polar Research, and an excavation project in Greece. You can check out Seiko's Save the Ocean projects on their website. I have come to realize that special edition just means it's a little bit different. It's not limited in any way, so you don't have to rush out and get this one. A good example is the SRPA21, the Patty Turtle that came out six years ago in 2016 and is being sold today under a new reference number, SRPE99. Now, what is this one selling for? Coming in at a price of 1250 USD on bracelet. You do not get a secondary strap and I'm going to knock it for that because being almost 1300, a special edition ISO rated pro diver, it needs to come on a rubber strap as well as the bracelet. The watch is rated at 200 meters of water resistance with a 6.5 millimeter coin edge or fine knurling crown. The case shape is inspired by the 1965 62 MAS Sickle's first professional diver, gorgeous squared off faceted tip lugs. This watch is best described as handsome. It's just clean cut, well thought out look to it. Everything is completely brushed except for the faceted tips and a high polished bevel that travels along the case to give this tough looking tool watch a little bit of pizzazz and oomph. Now these are the measurements, 40.5 millimeters in diameter, thickness of 13.2 drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 47.6 the bracelet 20 mil tapering down to 18 oyster style solid end links i'm gonna knock that it needs to be female here even though it does downturn pretty quick the bracelet is pins and collars you have a dive extension fold over twin button release fully milled clasp now the star of the show the beautiful textured dial. If you're a fan of the award-winning Grand Seiko White Birch, this one is gonna give you a taste of owning that fantastic dial. When I first saw the renders, I was worried. It looks a little cartoonish, maybe even a little bit cheap, but in hand, there is a shimmer here. It's beautiful. So maybe it's hard to see on the darker dial, but I do have the Icy Willard in hand and it's easier to see that sunray pattern underneath the texture on this dial. Maybe I'll show a super macro to demonstrate that sunray pattern within that textured dial. The bezel has a gorgeous coin edge grip and it's a joy to use. The tension, perfection. And let's have a listen. Everything lines up perfectly, loom pip perfect, hands aligned perfect. I have been noticing that they really are dialing in that QC. It is much better than it was when the first 63 MAS came out with the SPB 149. The hour indices are pressed, so it only has a paper thin application of Seiko's very powerful LumaBright formula. And you know what? I wish they gave us applied indices. It makes a big difference. Here I have a mod I'm working on, it's a replica dial for the SLA037 with deeply filled C3 loom and it outperforms the Seiko Lumabrite. The Seiko Lumabrite is stronger. It has the same strength as C3X1, but because it's so thinly applied, 
it loses out to deeply filled weaker C3. So man, imagine putting this dial in this watch. Uh oh. <laughs> blasphemy? Is that blasphemy? <laughs> mm, I wish I could do it just to show you how it looks. You get a nice premium look with the applied indices. 179 grams with all the links. So this one is definitely heavy on that bracelet. We have the 6R35 70 hours of power serve, 24 joules, hack hand wine automatic, 216 VPH, a low beat movement. And this one looking pretty good. Very powerful amplitude, 311. We got some beat error here, 0 0.3. And look at the rate, plus two, plus two, plus one. And the fourth and final round, plus one. Okay, we're gonna do 12 down to see that positional variance and how will this watch actually react on your wrist. Right off that bat, plus 12, we're gonna ignore it because I just flipped it and flopped it. Let the watch get its bearings. 275 amplitude, it did drop, which is normal. Beat air got better which it does change when you change positions with this movement. And uh, wow, plus three, plus four, plus two. Oh, we're gonna do the extra round because we're ignoring the first and the fourth and final round, plus two. All right, good job, Seiko. Okay, there is a loom shot, powerful Seiko Luma Bright. There is a loom pip at 12 o'clock. Maybe I should do a battle between the aftermarket dial and the Seiko dial in a fun video. There is a lot to like with this watch, beautiful, Glacier, deep blue, textured dial, tough, reliable movement. Sapphire, officially ISO rated, wet tested, pro diver, excellent bezel feel. And if you haven't picked up a Seiko diver yet, this one might be the one you've been waiting for. And guys, if you're still here and you love watches, remember to subscribe, like the video, and do some more window shopping with the videos on the right of your screen right now. And I'll see you in the next one.